What is going on guys? Welcome to the Nightcap. We're going to kick this one off with ACU and Denver Tech. There is no waiting game here. We're going to get right into it. No appetizers. This is the big enchilada. 2v5. Yes, top five matchup here at Culver Stadium. Opening kickoff here. ACU's kicking off. That's Charlie Taff. Going downfield. There we go. Getting it underway. Just that was really teams. suspenseful. Thank you oh, for yeah. that. You're right. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> here comes Drakeen and Timmons. 9 of 11 for 20 yards in the last game. 20 yards passing the last game. That's terrible. But he did everything else on the ground. So Jarquez Holly here going for two. We know Ooh. they like the no huddle. They're doing that hurry up. So no bit. time being wasted here. ACU defense is going to have to really step up their game in this one. They played well against FSU, but... You know, against this read option, I mean, basically the lineman for Denver Tech like pushes you three yards down the field from the line of scrimmage. That's real having that much of a bonus. That's hard to get by. Yeah, but we know ACU one of their strengths: defensive line. Greer, Armadaris, and Kennedy gotta really like those guys. So third and nine here, they get a little bit of pressure on Timmons, and they are gonna need it when he throws in that <laughs> was a lame duck. I was just gonna say that's the exact word I was gonna use. Yeah, but nice pressure there. Nice job forcing. Timmons out of you know out of his element a little bit. Now we see that A Money Stoudemire are gonna take the helm here in this game. Get his first touches on the football, and here's a nice pass complete. Took a big shot though. Jacrispy. Gotta love Jacrispy. He got crispy right there. He got crisp <laughs> to a T. Second and one here. One for one, Stoudemire. Nice pass, though. I, I'm still caught up on that pass. Now they're sticking the little read option right down Denver Tech's throat. And Stoudemire is going to pick up 16. So yeah, be nice careful, job. though. Stoudemire is not the most durable. That is very true. And look at this. Oh, my goodness. What a throw by Stoudemire. Oh, that's always reliable Joe Johnson, Jr. That's the one thing that Stoudemire can do that Timmons can't seem to do. Oh, my no. God. Oh, he got laid out there. But he seems to be fine. Two, okay. rushes, two rushes for 22 right now for Stoudemire. And now they're implementing some of the hurry up here. They're, they're really, like, looking at Denver Tech like, you know what? We can do what you do, but do it better. And here's a great throw to the pylon. And did he catch it? Connor and, Smith. And the face plant. <laughs> Didn't stick the landing. But Connor Smith gets the touchdown. Good stuff. ACU has the lead. Quarter of the end zone. Perfect That's throw. Dude, he threw it right at that pylon. Look at it. He goes, Ew. Oh, we missed it. Ah, I cut it, it out. Sound I cut it out. Okay. You didn't want to embarrass the poor nope, guy. Nope. I did really good. <laughs> But here's Drakeen and Timmons on a second and five. And look at, oh no! Armand Hammer runs into his own teammate, and Price Greer has to Greer come from all down. the way to the line of scrimmage and make this tackle. And then look at this! Schema Jones gets. Unreal! That's Atari Scroggins. He just shrugged off that defender the, and rolled back into the end zone. Unreal, that was guys. Schema Jones couldn't make the tackle, and then. Armadaras goes for the legs, but he falls wow. over into the end zone. So wow. Atari Scroggins, the new touchdown vulture. This is what Denver Tech seems to do all the time, guys, is they always seem to have their running backs fall forward. And then look at this, Stoudemire with the fumble. And that's, I believe that's Craig Shates. Shates gets the strip. Covington and Shates in on the pressure. And Stephen Dixon falls on the loose football. So, Man, Denver, they always come up with these big plays, man, right when they need them. And here's Timmons going inside 15. That's James Washington with the big hit on Timmons. And then look at that. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy doink. crap. That was not Granger who made the tackle or the deflection, but they focused on him for some right. reason. So third and 10. And Timmons finds a receiver. That's Gerard Woodstrom. Jared Woodstrom. Tight Jared end. Woodstrom. Kind of a Jake Butt type, I would say. So... News here though, Stoudemire hurt himself with the uh, injury there. So on the fumble, yep, yep. on that fumble. So uh, it looks like again it's going to be Peter Vyajic time. So Stoudemire, man, they really need to protect him a little bit better. Yeah, and it's going to be really interesting to see how Vyajic does in this game because you know he kind of struggled when he got in for Stoudemire in a couple couple games. Seems like every time he gets in, it's, it's something about confidence. Maybe I'm not sure, but. You know, we see here Tremaine Keaton making a nice play defensively on that contested throw. Second and ten, and you can see that the pressure, it's just the decision-making is just not quite there yet. You know, got to get rid of that ball. Can't hold on for it for too long. That's an eight-yard sack. And then on third and 18, he does fire it deep. And what a good, that's a good throw. Uh, what did I tell you about him? 
Great throw. Joe Johnson Jr. Totally underrated. Nobody talks about him. Well, he I mean he helped this he helped this quarterback out right there. Yeah. For sure. And then we get Kyle Mitchell here with a nice little reception, but it's not gonna be good enough for a first down, so a fourth and four. Punting the football back to Denver Tech, and then we see a nice tackle there. But Scroggins picks up the first down. Kennedy cannot get the pitch. He threw it right at him. Yeah. And then so, we see Scroggins not picking up the first down there. First down by Granger. Uh, another injury was Jarquez Holly. Holly misses the rest of this game. So now it's the Atari Scroggins show. Always falling forward. Our Denver Tech running backs, guys. We get that first down. And then here is Schmidt. I believe that's nope. Jaleel Schmidt. Schmidt's been out for oh. ever. Oh. He keeps going to Scroggins. Whoops. Scroggins is five. Yeah, it's Scroggins and uh, Jaraviah Bowman. Oh is my! Goodness. Now the backup running back. It doesn't seem to matter who they it have. It really in there. doesn't. I don't think it does. <laughs> it's, that, it's just that offensive line, guys. It's too legit. And look at this. That was Sterling Pancake. He <laughs> put some syrup on that pancake. Uh, oh! <laughs> oh no! What are you doing? No, Vajic! Oh no! No! Mm. Tremaine Keaton. With the pick six. And now this game is, uh, yeah, this game is getting bad now. So 28 to 7. Can't throw across the field uh, like that. So I don't know what to say. The absolute disgust in my voice right now, guys. I can't. ACU, I can't. They're, they're better than this, man. They need to be a little bit better, all sides of the football. I mean, it's the turnovers. Like, the offense is fine. Like I said, could be a little bit better, but they're, they're doing okay on offense. Defense is holding their own. It's just those turnovers put them in a bad spot. Tight throw there to Connor Smith. Yeah, it seems like after that interception, Vi just is like coming out slinging right now. And then we see him almost fight off that sack. But again, another three-yard loss. It's Randy Lowe on the sack. Third and goal. And then we got a little screen pass here that, you know, I don't blame him for running that type of play. I mean, it's against this defensive line for... An aggressive D Denver Tech team. I don't blame them, but they're going to kick that field goal. It's going to be 28 to 10 at, at the half. half. That's not I, what I expected. I, I really thought ACU would play a little bit better in that first half, but you know, there's a lot of there he is. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> there he is. Well, I love this tackle by Greer too. I know the guy. The guy he just gets up like he's a freaking machine. <laughs> <laughs> I love Price. <laughs> if I have the chance to draft him, I'm doing. Oh it. yeah, he's a first rounder. There's no doubt. No doubt in my he's mind. He's got the physical look. But look at this pancake. I mean, yeah, it could have been better there by pancake. And, uh, man, so this is not the way it wanted to go for ACU. You know, running the ball, they're never going to do that. You know, you got to stick with Vajic. Let him throw. Let him run the offense. I think he'll get comfortable doing that. And then if you're Denver Tech, you just pound, keep pounding the ground games and just run this game now. Just keep doing what works, man. That's all you got to do. And here's... Vajic on the opening part of the second quarter, and Orlando Ferris is going to get that deflection. And again, another contested throw. Vajic is going to have to clean that up, man. They're not going to win this game if he keeps doing that. Yeah, but Armandaras hauls down. Timmons there. Vajic gets the football back, and he's throwing deep. Oh, he's good got throw. a lane. Good throw. There. Nice toss there to Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson just lays out. Dude, he took a throws caution to the wind. Yeah, he could have been concussed. Yeah. I mean, no kidding. And then look at this, another throw. Kyle Mitchell. I mean, these these defensive backs for Denver Tech are licking their chops in some of these throws. They're like, oh, we're going to we're going to take your head off. Yeah. Second and 10 here and a no oh, oh no. My. No, no, no. <sighs> no. If you guys can hear my voice here, I'm rooting for ACU, dang it. I want them to play a little bit better, make this more competitive, but Jordy Williams Picks him off on the sidelines. ACU needs a uh, heroic stop here on oh, defense, good, good. and he gets hauled down. Timmons brought down by Matthew Kennedy. Good to see him show up. Yep, it's been kind of absent recently. Third and eighteen, and look at this. All of that for nothing. Third and eighteen the for Woodstrom. nothing. Thirty-five yards. But we got third and three here. This is the end of the third, pretty much. You got fifty seconds. Oh, that's a good stop right there. Coming in to make the stop, and then we got Dragosevich going wide wow. right. So, I mean, it's still a three-score game, though. So, ACU needs a touchdown. They need it bad. Oh, they they called that in, by the way. They called that a catch. No review at all. 24 Kirps. yards there to Kyle Mitchell, and then look at us, Tyler Kerp. Kerp. All right. So, ACU's on the board. They're trying to make this a game again. Vyavich, 24-32. Okay. End of the third here. We're going to see Timmons throw a screen, and this is going the other way. He's got room. Go! He's going. 
short field. I should not be biased straight up. I should totally take myself out of this. But yeah. Michael Clayton comes up huge with an interception. Wow. So ACU picks up 14 points in like 20 seconds. They're back in it. They're back in it. He didn't even know what to do. He's like, what? Uh, I got the ball. The number one quarterback in the country just threw me an interception. So look at these last five drives. I mean, you got to like what the defense is doing because they are, I mean, they're just stepping up, making this a game again. So this is four points. But what is Timmons going to do here? He's running. He's going to take that for a nice little 20-yard rush. He knows he's good. Seems like no problem at all. Third and 11 here, and look at it. Scroggins yet again. Going to pick up another first down. Third and 11, and he picks it up by an inch. Unreal. Second and one, and this pass can be ruled incomplete. Look at look at the efficiency for Drakini Timmons. He's got seven completions over 100 yards. Yeah, so, I mean, I'll, but that pick six uh, looms large here. and Oh, a fumble. Oh, we dropped the ball. Oh, dude. Timmons drops the ball, and he's hurt on that play. This might be the break the ACU needs. So, we got the future in here, Alex Makovich, and I don't know if they're going to trust him to throw the ball. He's, he's a redshirt freshman right now, so probably not going to really risk it. So, they got Jarvia Bowman out there. And they are trying to run some clock here, trying to get that dagger touchdown. It's gonna be short. Wow, that is an unreal effort by Price Greer. That was that his momentum was carrying he him into the end zone. Him to the ground. Yes, that's a beast, dude. Second, second and goal. Four minutes left to go here, and look at this nice gang tackling there on Bowman. That's James Washington leading the way. Third and goal now. Makovich. He's got running back here, Scroggins, right behind him. And we get oh, a stop. We get the stop. I, I keep saying we. <laughs> uh, ACU gets the stop. Fourth and goal. They're going for it. Rather than kicking the field goal to go up by a touchdown, they go for this to be up 11. Team. Denver is an aggressive team. And Scroggins gets it in. So, yeah. look, But look at that blocking, guys. Everybody got pushed off the line. So Wow. But, I mean, if you look at this on paper, really close game, evenly matched game. So, But, yeah, Vi just needs to spark here two and a oh, half nice, minutes. Nice toss right there. Big time uh, streak route there. First and ten. And another good throw. Ooh, it was just a little bit higher. Cage tip cans. Chip 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 chip. Peter Vi just gets a sack here. Ah, third and seventeen. Got to come through. Just pick up a little chunk of yardage here. You know, you don't have to get the whole thing here. And that's what they're going to do as they get 16. So, Tyler Kerp, this is the game right here. Fourth and one. You got to get it. You got to get it. But oh, the blocking is not there. And Simmons gets stopped behind the line. And now he's hurt. Looks like a knee injury. Turns Unreal. out not to be serious. But the next play here goes to Scroggin. And he oh, drops the ball. Granger. Granger. Comes up. Stevens with the recovery and Granger. How does that happen? I don't know. The just very next play, the ball gets turned over. So Vajic has it back. He, yeah. Oh man, this is his moment right here. You gotta, you gotta bring your team back in it. Yeah, you're down two scores, but you gotta get your team back on the map here and give yourself a chance. First and ten, little play action pass, and I'm not sure why they fell for that, but okay. So Tyler Kirk gets a first down, a big time reception. First and ten. Vyjic looking, scanning, and he's got a nice completion there to Kyle Mitchell. So he's been making some really big catches today, and that one was really big. And then we see Vyjic rolling into there to the end zone. So touchdown, ACU 35-31. They're down by four. Got to get the onside kick. That's the next step. And we know that can be hard, but actually next step is the PAT. We got to go from two here to make this a three-point game. Overthrown. Looked, looked like he had him. I think he uh, looked there. But, you know, Vi just he racked up the yards. So Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't play bad. It's just the, the two interceptions cost him, I think. And then we see here uh, the teleportation effect of yeah, the onside did, kick. Did he hit it like a, like a soccer? Like, you know, just bounced like it up to his hands. Ronaldinho is, like, kicking the ball off? Or, <laughs> you know, or what, what is going on there? Ronaldinho. <laughs> I don't know what happened. He must have made some oh. kind of athletic move there. But Scroggins, player of the game. I don't know why that caught me so funny. Man, so Denver gets a huge win over ACU. ACU again, man. They just cannot really get that massive. I mean, they've done it non-conference. Yeah. I'd like to see him do it in the Big 12 eventually, though. I think it just comes down to luck at this point because... Yeah, they're just not catching a lot of breaks. Stoudemire being hurt really cost him. 
in my head. Yeah. I mean, no, I'm not, I'm not sliding Viagets whatsoever here, but I'm just saying, like, he brought him back, right. and he kept him in the and game. We're not sliding Denver either. It's just it'd be fun to see like ACU win a big game for once. But right. You know, you got to give credit to Denver again, as we always say. They have not lost. They haven't lost in two years. So kudos to them as well. Good so God. We're gonna go here, Nebraska State, McAllen. We've seen a few runs here with Frankie Pritchett so far. We know the obviously the conditions. Yeah, not suitable to McAllen's kind of offense. Oof. A little more in our wheelhouse, but you know, lately we've been opening it up a little more. We've been like setting teams up with the run and then kind of letting Shinoski do his thing, as you see here. Shinoski, oh, but the drops, the weather, drops. the Iowa weather, Harrison, fumble recovery. It's the rain. Yeah, I mean, it's it's yeah, that's tough. Well, okay, I mean, who are you taking in this battle here? Are you taking Garrison or are you taking Shinoski? I think Iowa Garrison should win that, but he, yeah. Yeah, so Jamal Spivey, the fullback. So this is interesting with Rodriguez and McAllen. They like to stretch the field, but in these kind of conditions, I don't know if that's what they're going to end up doing. Maybe they'll go a little more underneath. Maybe they'll use Malloy more than they have lately. I mean, this is different for them. Yeah, a lot of running back motion that they're putting into effect here, but, you know, the accuracy by Rodriguez has got to get a little bit better. Got to, I don't know, figure out the... The grip on the football or something because the, the, both those passes to the left and the right of the sidelines just weren't accurate at all. Didn't give your receiver a chance. We see a big catch there by Brenneman and then look at Shinoski using his athleticism. The punter. That's the punter. But he gets in for a touchdown so it's going to be 7 0 Nebraska State early on in this terrible conditions. Yeah. Game. Kind of a driving rain. And we'll see Rodriguez again going low to Weber uh -oh. underneath. Uh oh. We know our secondary can't tackle, so that's we're at a disadvantage there. Yep. Malloy running the ball up here for ten yards, so another fresh set of downs. It'll be third and thirteen here though, and you know, we gotta focus on kind of stopping Carson Jackson. That's what I'm scared of. But Nelson led better the tight end. You also can't sleep on him. You can't sleep on a lot of these guys, a lot of these weapons for McAllen. If once you start taking away Carson Jackson, everybody else seems to get open. And then uh, there's a lot of lanes there for Marcus Rodriguez to get in. So both quarterbacks have a rushing touchdown here on options. So Shinoski's going to go underneath here. Swan picks up a first down on third and six. Going to get back in the red zone. Shinoski rolling. Nobody's there, and oh, oh my. no, again! You that, can't have this. Okay, that's not my fault. I wanted him to slide. Gunta dives. Gunta, yeah. Oh my Brett Tomlinson gosh! Going to the house, all because I press X. I want him to slide, but he dives. So that's the that's the game's fault. Oh, oh come on! That's the game's fault. Well, it's how about slide? How about your linemen uh, taking each other out? They yeah. probably would have had Tomlinson down. Yeah, and then we, you know, and Tomlinson's a good player too. So yeah, and then we get two, yeah, intentional grounding. So Janowski, he's yeah, he's making some freshman mistakes here. I guess that's what you get when you have an improvisational type of player, right? It's you kind, know, of a, we, kind of a wild card. Hey, we we see that with Patrick Mahomes, but I think he's been doing that. He's been on the lucky side of things right now. Yeah. <laughs> How about this, Blake Bonaventura? Improv. Blake Bonaventura, the number two tight end, does not get the spot. So it's gonna be fourth and inches. Conservative call here for the Matadors. They kick the field goal. Now we go right before the half. Shinoski goes to Vivaldi on third. That Damn. was a very risky throw by Shinoski. Luckily, gotta, it was right on the money. Yeah, we got to make something happen. I think we got a man beat here, and that is Brenneman in the middle of he's, the end zone. He's crafty. He's a crafty wide receiver. Knows how to route run. Can do that perfectly. So Nebraska State pulls within three. This is a lot closer of a game than the experts thought. Yes, against the number 11 team in the country, so we're liking it. So how about this? We're going to have a little play action here. Schnasky rolling. Somebody's got to be open. Wow, you went deep. Uh, he he could have went underneath to X, but he went to the sidelines in a nice throw. Nice throw, nice catch, especially in the in the conditions here. And Schnasky on this little option play decides to keep it, picked up the first down. All right, we're rolling out. we got to have something that flips <laughs> to Nichols, Oh, dude, I wish that would have worked. Yeah, that would have been cool. That, that would have been Manziel esque right there. Yep. A little flip. So now we got Shinoski here running some slants. Somebody's got to be open again, and Brenneman oh. drops it. And I, man, he's get, he gets the drops at the worst time. Marlon Malloy sheds a tackle. Oh, no. Going down the sidelines. That's for 19. So second and two here, and we bring it. You're bringing uh, 
some zone blitz, but it's not going to get it's not going to get stuffed. Marlon Malloy, seven yards right there. Rico Gathright uh, coming on in the game here. Third and fifteen, and they're running a screen. And this. oh no, they got no. the blocks. Third. I love I love defending screens. Third, I can <laughs> see them. Third and fifteen, they get twenty four on that play. Second and goal here, and Rodriguez going to the end zone and a drop. Oh, you gotta have that if you're McAllen. Yeah, and look at the yards too for McAllen. Like not a lot, not a lot of yards here. O'Connor makes the tackle in the backfield, so McAllen's gonna have to settle for a field goal here. They do take the lead. It is the start of the fourth quarter, and that's not a pass you need to make. Orlando McDaniel with the deflection. He's a linebacker. Second and ten, and you have got the Valdi wide open on the four verts play. Yeah, so, no. Yeah, that's the weakness for McAllen, I would say, is their secondary. They were leaving some guys open in the middle of the field. Here's a little throw to Brenneman. Makes the catch this time. That's good. I'm noticing that they, their holes are mostly from the man coverage. They're getting beat on the press. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of room to throw. So Shinovsky gets the touchdown here to Vivaldi on a slant again. So, yeah, like you said, man coverage beat pretty easily. Takes him out into the end zone. I like that. Yeah, it's not something you'd expect from a guy with really good hands is having a power like he showed. Yeah. And, you know, Vivaldi with some power to get in there is actually kind of encouraging. And look at this. Almost intercepted. What? A, that's a bad throw by Rodriguez. But offside call on Nebraska State. That's Kadeem Williams. Yeah, we were trying to guard that screen. And then a uh, little too... Uh, close to the line of scrimmage. And I was just going to say, too, like Carson Jackson, not been involved here. That's his second catch, 44 yards on the day. Marcus Rodriguez for 202 yards. We see him throw like 490. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a travesty to see that Carson Jackson is not being utilized in this game. I'm not sure where he has been or, like, what – What's the deal? I mean, I'm not sure. Is it, the, is it the conditions? Is he not able to cut? Like, what's the problem here? But Mar Rodriguez gets a touchdown to Barrett Love. So McCallum takes the lead yet again, 27-24, and a deep shot to Cade Myers. Incomplete. No. Oh, he caught it? Oh, no. He caught it? Wow. Off of the deflection. What? And in these in this rain, like, your hand, he's got no gloves. He just pulled off a Julian Edelman in the Super Bowl. Dude. Wow, we needed that, though. That was wow. big. So Shinovsky's rolling here. Minute 20 left, and oh, he's got Brenneman. The improv skills. How about this? That the is Prairie juicy. Dogs. Prairie Dogs are getting it done. Shinovsky outdueling Rodriguez, who kind of played himself into oh, the Heisman he conversation. Big hit there, too. But, again, Brenneman, the crafty receiver. Dude, th this hookup right here, like, Wow. Yeah, wow. Look, it's looking good. Now we got a minute 10, though, and Rodriguez has the ball. Not where we want to be, but we get some pressure. And a lot of McAllen linemen are just, like, standing around. Uh, surprising that we made it that easy to get to him. And Malloy on a screen pass. Play so, calling is questionable. 56 seconds. Now we got fourth and 20. So, oh, the sidelines. Wow. Wow, that's a terrible. That's terrible. That's terrible, man. That's inexplicable. But look at the total yard differential. Dude, Nebraska State, they came to Nebraska State, into Grand Municipal Stadium, and they just said, let's go. Let's yeah. go. I mean, we look showed Willis's up. Willis' jersey, by the way. It's all clean. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, but he's being a good teammate, very good teammate. But, man, I don't think anybody really saw this coming. Uh, like, our secondary played the best game that they have ever played in this dynasty. Uh, and then McAllen just, like, handicapped themselves they were throwing underneath all game did not stretch the field against us so and by the way we did lose frankie pritchett for the season broken collarbone so bittersweet it's a bittersweet game here now would, before we get into little rock odessa do you want any brief comments on the massive upset that we just pulled off uh no I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I always trash on Nebraska State just because you're the little brother. I, I got to do that. It's part of the job. You know, it's part of the job description. No, uh, that win probably wasn't going to happen if that Cade Myers catch didn't happen. You're right. You're right. I think the conditions helped us at the end of the day, but hey, we'll take it. Amazing upset. Amazing upset. Right. Now we're going to go here to Odessa, Texas. We got Odessa State. Hosting the Little Rock Battle Hawks, so the Dust Devils and the Battle Hawks. I love this matchup. I don't Undefe know if it's the red or what. I don't know. Undefeated teams 
you know, and it's, it sounds weird to say that after both teams missed a bowl game last year. They have not had the hardest schedules in the world, but Little Rock coming off a road win at Auburn. They got the freshman phenom, Gunnar Rivers, who played okay against Auburn. Racked up some yards late. It's kind of a weird type of... Well, it's not a weird match. We see that a lot happening in, in sports. You got the grizzled veteran of you know Montana Flynn versus Mon, uh, Gunnar Rivers. Yeah, I mean, Montana Flynn, redshirt senior. So it'll be interesting to see if the youngster takes out the the old fogey. <laughs> exactly. And maybe learn a few things while on the sidelines. Yeah. Now we got Mike Manet here taking a carry. Gets a couple yards. We got so Manet and Nice Green forming a pretty nice duo, I think, so far. So a lot of freshmen on the field for both teams. Little Rock, though, with their uh, quarterback or their backfield, offensive backfield. Freshman heavy there. So here's Montana Flynn. Nice throw. We see after Little Rock held to a field goal, you got There's Kyle my boy. Rivera. My boy right there, Kyle Rivera. Good good receiving crew for Odessa State. Third and two and split back set here, and Montana Flynn going to decide to run it. He actually ran it really well in the last couple weeks, so you know he can do that. Mark Tarasovich with the stuff. They're going to get a field goal here to make it 3-3. Three to three. Mid part of the second quarter, and we've got Gunnar Rivers finding... That is Lonnie Luke for a 14-yard reception. Now we have made it probably at the 35-yard line. I think that's where that was. And then we've got Tim Rosario here with the deflection. Gunner Rivers trying to go deep. Going to be incomplete, so they will have to punt the football back to Odessa, who was unable to capitalize on their opportunity. So now we see a sack on Little Rock's next possession. And, again, another overthrow by Rivers. So he's got to work on that, but he's 12-15. of 15. He's not... He's not slinging it too bad here tonight yeah uh, interesting game like the where's the offense we wanted to see some offense right there and that i think is the start of good things to come for both of them so going oh, down field where, where, where is he down at the one yard one line. yard line Unreal. how does that happen that's, that's ridiculous it's so stupid it's ridiculous if that all happened, the momentum in the world dude come on and he dives he probably dives in real life he dives that's a touchdown <sighs> No, but Little Rock needs an answer here. They need a response drive. I mean, you're coming up right before the half. You always want to cash in, get some good mojo going into the locker. And there's Luke again. Nope, that's Kenny Puck. Oh, Kenny Puck. Kenny Puck. Those guys mixed up. Yep, and then we got a touchdown pass here. Wide nice. Open. That's Etwan Billings, the senior. Gotta love him. Yeah. Gotta Wide love Etwan Billings. Though. He's awesome. He's good. Nice touchdown throw by Rivers. A nice catch. And, you know, Montana Flynn and Odessa, they aren't done yet. Don't count them out here. Nice completion to Brock Skinner. I don't know how he completed that, but he did. It's going to be 21 yards, 33 seconds left here, and uh, we're going deep. Oh, man. And so Khalid Livingston. How about, so, yeah, the offense just comes in an avalanche here. I'm so still that, doing it, by the way. What's that? We're doing it. We, we just threw it deep. We, oh. we, 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 we. Odessa State <laughs> takes the lead into the half. So, man, we talked about it. There's six points on the board for... 55 minutes in uh, or uh, 25 minutes in football time oh god and then uh, just an avalanche of points there near the end of the half so this pick wow. though going the other way rivers kind of careless with the football Didier carlton defensive mvp outside of miguel machado who is on the injury list like everybody in our conference oh uh, nice hit so carlton the safety one of the best players on this odessa team Marcus Livingston makes a sack here. So we got Odessa moving backwards. It's going to be third and 18 and getting some more pressure. That's Livingston yet again, and he's going to mess with Flynn's timing, and Little Rock's going to get the football back. And we see here that Isaiah Green is starting to punch the football right back in Odessa's D-line's face, man. Got to grind it. I love Isaiah Green. A little underthrown here. Uh, just a little bit. A little bit. And then we see a, another little underthrown pass. It was oh, it was behind the line of scrimmage, and the deflection, it was almost picked off, but then it's ruled a fumble anyway because it's past the line of scrimmage, and there you go. So it's yeah, so, another turnover. Man, it's on I'm, Rivers. Come on, man. It's the freshman thing, dude. Yeah, it must be. So, again, that was Dedrick Carlton. And where did he get the black helmet from? I don't know. But, yeah, anyway, Rivers, not happy. It's the dunce cap, actually. Oh, okay. Not happy, but we've seen this play all the time. That play, they just stretch the field and they beat the coverage. It's Khalid Livingston. So, man, Odessa State trying to rack up those points, rack up those passing yards. Montana Flynn showing Gunner how it's done. 
<laughs> it's, it was on the next play. It was on the very next play, guys. So little to no time wasted for Odessa after that turnover. And then we got second and three here for Rivers and the gang trying to come back. You know, it's, it's late part of the third quarter. Now we're early part of the fourth. You know, they're still in this. They're only down two touchdowns, but you got to come through in this situation. Now that Odessa's feeling, you know, putting some pressure on Rivers and the offensive line, you know, that little play action bootleg rollout type of deal, and we get a completion there. But now fourth and five after an incompletion, and Rivers and the offense got to come through here, and they do. So Etwan Billings with the six yard catch. It's going to be 24 17. But look at Rivers' numbers 32 of 40. You know, that's what you got to like. You know, the accuracy, missed a couple throws. Oh, goodness gracious. Overall pretty good. But Khalid Livingston, again, stretching the field. He's got three grabs for a buck, 41. That's insane. That is insane. He's he's literally taking the top off of that defense. And then look at this, wide open. Nobody's in the flat to cover Logan Sweeney, who's obviously a really good pass catcher out of the backfield. And Odessa gets that touchdown right back. Yeah, so we got a uh, kind of a draw here that's going to be nice I agree so Little Rock you know they're not done yet cannot be ruled out with uh, Rivers slinging the ball like he has been and this ball's been going oh no grabs. oh no and that is an interception and looking at the replay here he's in but you know Kenny Puck you got to fight for that football man I know it's tough because the guy's bigger than you but you got to do a little bit better than that so guys this game's gonna be over Odessa wins this thing. They improved to 5-0. and Going to Rivers. Hey, you're going to have a lot to learn, man. Montana Flynn definitely showed you how it's supposed to be done. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed week six action for conference play. Double upload Saturday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's talk about the games, just our takeaways and what happened. A little bit of a recap. Yeah, with... You pulling out the win against Kansas A&M, you're going to move to 5-0. and And, I mean, hey, you're the only team in the Big 12 East to win a game. So, yeah, you are Trendsetter. Yeah. What? Trend you're, breaker. You are in first place right now. Heck yeah, and man. And the rest of the Big 12 East is in trouble because McAllen is already down a game. Broken Arrow, ACU, Shreveport, and Little Rock all went down. So, as far as Nebraska State's division goes, the West is really on the uptick which i mean last year i would argue the east was better you know there's a lot of football to be played though you can't i still think that the east is better i think that just this week was crazy you might be right i mean you got think about this you got number 25 mccallum we've already simulated into week number seven but we'll show those games uh, real quick but you got mccallum you know number 25 you got acu you got myself i mean little rock is on the up and up yeah, it's I, we, they were all on the road too, and then uh, that's going to uh, flip next week. So, um, but takeaways for week six? Yeah, I mean, Broken Arrow really struggled. I don't think Street set himself apart, but he is the future. So I I think they might just roll with it. Um, you know, it wasn't his fault. A lot of play calling, really conservative, and. That, you know, didn't get a lot of if help he, from the offensive line. If he plays that poorly, I don't know if they make it to a bowl game. So do you throw away, if you're the coaching staff, if he loses next week, you might have to go back to Godot because, yeah, I mean, I you're, you're putting the team in jeopardy here to try to, I mean, they want to get to a bowl game here. Right, and we're talking about McAllen's schedule coming up. I mean, they play ACU and Denver, uh, throw in Shreveport, and then you throw in Midland. So that's what tough. That's what their schedule looks like, and they dropped the game that they should have had. And ACU, tough. I mean, you know, you know, you draw Denver from the West, although Denver does play the three hardest teams from the East, so they can't really cry foul there too much. But, yeah, road game there, that was hard. Uh, and then Amarillo needed that game. Shreveport may have needed this game. Shreveport, I mean, their schedule's tough, too. So. It's a battle of two teams that really needed the game. I yeah. mean, really to... Get back on track. Yeah, Amarillo's alive, though. I think that if they dropped that, I think they were toast. Dee Dee Dukes played really well. He really did. And then, yeah, Odessa with the uh, the 5-0. and oh, the, uh, you know, <laughs> It's really surprising. The, it's kind of it's a high-calorie 5-0. Oh, you know, a lot of cupcakes. 
Yeah, but, but they're there. But so they're there, good. and they got the, all those freshmen on defense. That it's you know, the, Odessa, you guys got to watch out for them because, and obviously the quarterback position going forward, you know they're gonna have they're gonna need a quarterback like Montana Flynn to continue that trend. Yeah, yeah. and we're looking at recruiting. Gone. They're they're trying to they got some guys in there now, but they're gonna try to get some more. Yep. This offseason, and we're gonna look ahead in here, week seven, week two of conference play. Tough game right here. I don't yeah. really know who to pick. There. Like I said, I mean these are these games are all rematches from last year. I, re- I recognize all these games, and the home teams did not flip. So I wonder if like um, it's just part of if it just rotates. It's like a two year deal. I don't know. We'll have uh, to see what happens next year. Yeah, like Midland State Shreveport, we saw Odessa at Ardmore last year. Denver Tech goes back to McAllen. We go back to Little Rock. So. Um, yeah, we'll see. So, what do you think is going to happen here? I mean, I mean, interesting uh, games. Like I said, the Big Twelve East is now all at home. Um, I like, you know, when I'm looking at Kansas A and M against Broken Arrow, I actually like that matchup for them, just because of what I saw with Brian Street and with Camus' defense. You know, they're not bad. I mean, Ardmore, all we basically did was just chew the clock on them. Yeah. So we didn't allow their defense to dictate to us. Uh, tempo. So we you know we ran the ball effectively with Jake Wood. We mixed Shook in there. We didn't throw a whole lot, I didn't think. But, you know, kill the clock on them because they're going to kill the clock on you. Have a low scoring defensive battle. I think that that favors Camu in this game because Broken Arrow, um, they're just very pass heavy right now with uh, Brian Street and. No, they didn't throw that much. They were forced to throw because they were getting blown out. Right. Right. They're, they're really conservative at the beginning of the game. Um, we're going to have Midland State at Shreveport. I'm putting Midland on upset alert. I think Shreveport really needs this game. They are trending down, though, lately. But, uh, I mean, look at Midland. Looking pretty good. Texas A&M, by the way, knocks off Alabama at Kyle Field. So we were talking about how amazing Alabama was, and they got beat by Texas A&M. So, um, but yeah, I'm, that's a... That was a tough loss, I think, for Shreveport. I don't know if they'll bounce back or not, but um. I th- I think that that offense is just too electric. Uh, Wingo is not having as effective of a season as he did last year, and I feel like you know a lot of that's that wear and tear dating back to last season. And yeah, I don't know. I don't Your know. Yards per carry are up, but yeah, when he played Bama and uh, Amarillo, he did not have that good a game. Uh, and how about this game? You, do you, are you putting yourself on upset alert? Uh, no. No? No. Okay. No, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Denver at McAllen. McAllen's still a really good team. Go back real quick, real quick. That Ardmore, This Ardmore game against Odessa, I feel like it's going to be the same strategy. The same strategy. Kill the clock. Don't let Flynn take over the game. Jake Wood showed me something in that game. Yeah. A lot of power running. I, I appreciate it. The effort on that part. Yeah, Denver Tech going to McAllen again like they did last year. Last year it was a great game. I expect more of the same. I think McAllen's got their backs up against the wall. Should be a ton of offense there. Nebraska State at Little Rock. We got hammered by Little Rock last season. And now they got a better quarterback. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we just came off a huge win against a top 15 program. Probably the first Nebraska State's had since 2010. Okay. (laughs) I mean, it's probably been that long. I, you know, I, I, it's kind of the national news, or you know, it was like Nebraska State's actually arrived. They're actually not bad anymore. They're kind of like Duke, you know. They're they're like Duke. Everybody kind of respects Duke now. People forget how bad they were like eight years ago. I mean, they were in the toilet. That's kind of what Nebraska State's like. Everybody's just kind of accepted that they're decent now. If Ben Shinosky plays well in this game, and he can improvise like he did last game, and not fumble the football twice then I think that Nebraska State can hang. Defense for Little Rock is still pretty good, but that's what I'm again, worried about. I'm worried about secondary. It's just that that Rivers thing. Amarillo ACU? Uh, I don't know. ACU handled them last year pretty good. I Like ACU, though, you got to be worried about that hangover loss. Um, but we'll see. It's just that Amarillo defense is not the same as they were last year. Yeah, well, there's a- some new you know, D.D. Dukes played well enough. I thought he played better than Springer has lately and you know that that extra little 
added spark into the offense is going to help them hang with ACU, but you know, it's, it's ACU. All right, guys. So before we go ahead and sign off, if you guys have made it this far, the surprise, the surprise that you guys have all been waited for kind of teased this a little bit throughout the season, maybe even dating back to the mountain West, but we're starting a new dynasty. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Cause we can't really do that right now because freaking team oh, yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, but uh, so the surprise for you guys. So Dylan Bowers and Heel Boy, you guys won some contests way back when. And what you guys won is you guys won some merchandise. You guys won some apparel. I'm introducing apparel. Have yet to show you guys what they look like, though, because I'm still trying to work out the, the kinks on who we're going through. But apparel and merchandise is coming to the channel. For the Big 12 team builder teams. So we'll have shirts, we'll have hats, we'll have um, just accessories, things like that. And, you know, maybe, you know, post in the comments below what you would want to buy. And then maybe I can look into see how I can make that happen. But I think it's going to be awesome. I mean, could you imagine ACU and Amarillo on a hat? Like one of those little baseball type of feels, like it's popped out and got the stitching. It looked pretty, pretty sweet. It looked pretty cool. So. You know, I'll have more information for you guys coming out uh, in the next coming weeks, coming days on that. But the big thing, the big thing is that I'm launching a website. So the official Gold Glover 9 channel website It's through Squarespace. I ended up buying a whole year subscription out. I'm just going to keep going with it, keep rolling with it, seeing how you guys are liking it. But basically what the website is, it's going to be free to access. You know, you guys will have the link in the description for my videos and Basically what this is, is an extension off of the channel. So basically everything that we do here on the channel from MLB The Show, Madden, Team Builder, basically that website's gonna cover extra like added on content. So if you guys are really wondering like how certain teams are are doing on the recruiting trail that, we're, that we might not be covering in the videos or Things that we might not even mention in the videos, like maybe some storylines, some quotes from coaches, some scouting reports on different players, things like that. It's going to all be in that website, and I think that that's a pretty cool extension. It's something that you guys can actually like go back to. If you're not getting enough information in the videos, you can go straight to the website and have that more deep dive and that more interactivity with the series. So. I feel like that would be a nice little addition. So what do you think? What do you think? How do you think the website's going to do? You think they'll like it? I think they should like it. Absolutely. You've seen it in action. Yep. You, you think Square, Squarespace does a really good job. I, I really like the layout, the Who's the making feel. the shirts? Is it like uh, Versace or Hugo Boss or something? Uh, I think it's... Um, I wish I knew. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, unless you guys want to pay 80 yeah. 80 bucks? For 80 Hugo bucks? Boss? No. That's here's, right. the, here's the big thing. I was actually talking to Wooter Apparel about this, and they were actually making, like, jerseys. Would you guys want a jersey? Like, yeah. I'm going to throw... I, I didn't want to throw that into the product line because I didn't... Because they're going to be expensive. Yeah. But I didn't think you guys would want to buy a jersey. But, you know, <sighs> let me know. I'll get you guys a jersey. You know, okay. an, Ar an Ardmore jersey or you an, can get AC ACU you jersey? You can get an authentically colored ACU jersey. I would buy one. It's <laughs> self-promoting there. Oh, man. Yeah, so it's going to be cool, guys. Um, like I said, it's launching today. It's launching tonight. So I'm posting it in the description below. Check those out. Heel Boy, I should mention, Heel Boy, there will be a pick center. So if you guys go to the Team Builder website, or not the Team Builder website because that's down, but my website and which is up. Which is up. Yeah, yeah it's up. It will be up. <laughs> we're Go. working on it. Oh, we're working on it. We're in generic responses. <sighs> you know, it's, it's under investigation. What yeah. investigation? Who are you contacting? Who are you talking to? Space aliens. God. Area 51. Um, so, any, so anyway, but the thing is, is you guys can go. There's going to be a pick center. So once you click there... You can actually compete with Heel Boy, and he'll actually have his analysis and his picks and his reasons behind his picks every Wednesday. So he'll have that posted every Wednesday, and you guys can kind of base your picks and kind of your ideas about you know who you're going with. And then obviously we'll have standings every Wednesday video. It's loaded. The website's loaded. I put a lot of time into this. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Um, ultimately, as everything that we do, you and I do, 
what I do separately on my other series. Everything's about you guys and your entertainment on this channel and the content that that we both bring to you guys. So um, that's always what it's been about, and that's what it's always going to be about. So with that, that is the outro. So we'll see you guys on Wednesday for the preview video for week number seven. Please check out the website and post in the comment section below. What do you like? What What do you think I need to add in? What What are some things I could change? Make it more enjoyable for you guys. So we'll see you on Wednesday. Leave a like if you like this thing and hit that little red button for a subscribe or my logo in the bottom right-hand corner. Like I said, we'll see you then. As always, peace.